Howdy, everyone. I'm Dr. Jacques Bailey, pronouncer of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. I'm here today remotely with our associate pronouncer, Dr. Brian Sietzema. And we're going to talk about the vowel schwa. Howdy, Brian. Hey, Jacques. Brian, could you tell everyone what a schwa is? Uh... Wait, you don't know? Oh, no, I know. I was just making a schwa sound for everyone to hear. Uh. Well, that sounds kind of uh, plain. Could you tell us more? Well, schwa is plain. It's called a, a neutral vowel. If you compared all the vowels to different flavors of soft drinks, schwa would be tap water. So it's bland, but it's useful. Very useful and very common in the pronunciation of English. In lots of our words, the vowels in the unstressed syllables turn into a schwa. Oh, for instance, in the word labor, that first vowel, that long A is stressed, but the second vowel is not. So it's pronounced kind of like a schwa, although you might think it's just an er. But if you add a suffix and make the word laborious, then the stress goes on the second syllable, that O pops out into full life and laborious. The first syllable being unstressed turns into a schwa. You get nice schwas in there. Exactly right. There are lots of cases in English of vowels turning to schwa when they get unstressed and vice versa. So mature, but maturation, remedy, but remedial, analyze, but analysis. Oh, so in the spelling bee, if you're wondering, is that schwa this or that, you can think, what's a related word, if there is one, and it might pop out as the sound. Or uh, sometimes in different, different varieties of English, like American English uh, laboratory and British English laboratory. Oh, quite right, old chap. So let me get this right. Every single vowel letter, the A, the E, the I, the O, the U, and the Y, and I'm talking about the letters, uh, they can be pronounced with a schwa sound, depending on stress. Doesn't schwa have a letter of its own? Well, linguists use an upside down E to stand for the schwa sound, but in regular English spelling, pretty much any vowel or diphthong can end up being pronounced as schwa. I see. So that's a headache for spellers, but it's nice for us because that makes it so that we can have spelling bees. <laughs> uh, especially since schwa is the most commonly occurring vowel in English and you can't spell it with the schwa. <laughs> right? So, and some words are especially strong with the schwa, like buttment or uncomfortableness. In my experience, schwa is an aspect of English pronunciation that can be difficult. Uh, especially for people learning it as a second language, because not every language has that neutral vowel. Right, so there's no schwa in Spanish or in uh, Greek, for example, but other languages uh, like French and Dutch and Welsh have the schwa sound. In fact, the word schwa comes from Hebrew, in which it's also one of the vowels. Yeah, and it's not like that schwa is a hard sound to make. So in these other languages, they don't have a schwa, and so that's why they say words are just spelled like they sound, because they don't have this sound that doesn't have a one spelling. But that's this right. schwa, it's, it's like the most relaxed sound that can come out of your mouth. You're just holding your mouth in no particular shape, and every other sound requires some tensing of the mouth, the lips, tongue, jaws, or a particular place of articulation, but not that schwa. You just kind of say, uh, and let it flow. Yeah, schwa isn't just a sound. Schwa is a state of mind. Uh, yep. Uh-huh. Enough said. So thanks for the scuttlebutt on schwa, Brian. Okay, bye-bye. Until next time, this is Dr. Jacques Bailey and Dr. Brian Sietzema explaining to you why we can have spelling bees from the Scripps National Spelling Bee. We wish you good health and good spelling. Stay safe out there. <laughs>